All right, I'm going to show you how to add lower thirds or a nameplate to your clips. Um, here I've pretty much finished my video, but now I just want to add the finishing touches like giving uh, each person I interview, giving them a name and putting uh, my name at the end of the video. So here's the first time I see this woman here talk. So I want to add her name. She talks here for, you know, about 30 seconds. So I'm going to hit Z for the zoom tool and zoom in. Or I could use this little tool here to zoom in and zoom out. And I'm going to move my playhead to maybe just one second in. You could make it start immediately or maybe make it start just a little bit in, whatever your choice is. Now, um, to add the lower thirds, I click here in my viewer. I click here. I have to be on video first, this video tab. If I'm here on mono uh, or filters, see here, I don't get, I don't have a little A. I go here to video. I click on the little A. I go down to text and then lower third. Now you see here it says sample text one, sample text two. Um, I need to be here on the arrow tool or push A. Now by default this lower third is going to be 10 seconds long. That's pretty long. So I don't know how to change that default. Uh, so you always have to manually type in 0, 3 seconds say for a start. Now um, right here it says sample text one, sample text two. If I click here on controls here you see sample text one, sample text two. If I change this to person's name, go back to video, look here, person's name. Now you could go here to controls, put in all the info and then check back to make sure it all fits. But a little better way of doing it is just click this as it is, drag it down like that. I always drag it down until say, you know, a higher up like layer 3 or something just so I can move it around it's not going to interfere with any of these other video clips now what you do is you drag it down move your playhead over top and now you see you can preview it see this playhead lines up with this clip and this so I can see it here then what I do is I double click don't forget to double click on this first then go up to controls and now I have this woman's name pre-written it's Janet Sperling, so I'll copy that. Now if I go up here, put in Janet Sperling, and then click off, look, it's updated. Go here to her title, she's with the Canadian Lyme Disease Foundation. Put that here in text box too. I can hit enter or click off, and there, now you see it's, we, we see what it's gonna look like. Now, that's a little long actually, it's taking up too much room. I can change uh, the size of the font by clicking here on size make that a little smaller and I want to make her name a little bigger so here for text one I can adjust the size now this is a, a white font and it shows up okay but it gets kind of lost now what you can do to make your text stick out a little more scroll down a bit you can go here to background by default it's none you can change it to solid and there, now there's a black bar. You can change the opacity of that bar by sliding this. So you put it, usually I put it to about 60% or so. And uh, there, see, that looks a little nice. Now, I shot this a little too tight. There isn't enough headroom. So you see, we're kind of covering our pop her face, and I don't, I don't really like that. So what I'll do instead is turn off that. And if I go over here to motion, I can click on drop shadow. And now, see there's a nice little, like a two pixel uh, black drop shadow behind that text. And it sticks out and it looks pretty nice. Only problem with adding a drop shadow though is look down here. Now it's red. That means we have to render it. Without the drop shadow, Final Cut Pro or Express can render in real time, which means I can preview what this looks like. I hit, click down here, hit play, you know, and there. However, if I add that drop shadow, now the computer has to think a little harder to render that drop shadow. And you see now it's red, which means the computer's going to have to render. In order to render, I can go up here to Sequence, Render, or I could just hit Apple R. And you see it's going to take a few seconds actually um, for it to compute um, th this uh, the drop shadow. So if you have the time, you could add these. If you're in a real hurry, you know, this is slowing you down. 
So, are we almost done? There we go. So now we have this drop shadow. I can preview it. Now, this went a little long. See here how it went to the end. So, I went into the next clip. Now, my lower third is just like a video clip or a picture or anything. I can move my cursor to the end. Remember, I'm still in the arrow tool. Click at the end, drag this over to shorten it. You know, or I could make it longer if I wanted, just like a clip. So now my clip is down here. Um, one last thing is you have other controls here you can play with. You could change your font color. By default, it's white. I could make this red. I could make my second font, or my second uh, line here, I can make this yellow. Ooh, I could also change my font. Let's say I wanted this instead of the Sea Grand to be Impact. Whoa, look at that. So you have a lot of control. Um, one thing to note, though, is that certain fonts don't resize too well. Um, this looks good right now, but if I was to resize this video for web, um, Impact falls apart because it's bubbly letters. And when this video gets resized and, and the image gets shrunk down, uh, the letters fall apart. So um, the default font, uh, Lucia Grand or whatever it is, uh, does work quite well. So I'll just leave it as that. And, uh, you know, white. But y you have a lot of options here, as you see. So I'm just going to change this back to white. And this back to white. All right, one last thing. Here we have our clip, and it looks good. But if you watch, it kind of comes in. You know, here, here, here it is, and it just pops up and pops away. To make it look a little nicer, click at the beginning of it, push Apple T, and click at the end of it, Apple T. And now we've added a crossfade. You see, it kind of fades in and fades out, and that'll look a little nicer um, when you zoom in. You can, of course, control the length of that crossfade. Again, we're on the arrow tool. I can click at the edge of this and make it a little shorter. Click at the edge of this and make it a little shorter or longer. So here we go. Now, again, this needs to be rendered because I have the drop shadow. So I hit Apple R. Wait a few seconds. You can see this uh, takes quite a long time if you're using the drop shadow. And uh, hit space. There, fades in, fades out. So there you go. That is how you do uh, lower thirds.